Peter Goober, Hollywood mogul, author of the new book, Tell to Win. Peter, in five minutes, tell me the story of your life. Wow, in five minutes, that's a lot of highlights to get through. The story of my life is I was born curious. I was always curious. I think I came out of the room and said, what was that? Uh, why do I want to leave this luxurious place, you know, food on tap, water on tap, you know? But I left, and then I left, I realized after that, it was a series of ups and downs. And I found in my life, my life was a series of cataclysmic failures and wonderful climbs to the top, up and down, up and down. And I learned as much from down, maybe more than from the up. So in my life, uh, after going to school forever, probably as a way of avoiding reality. Where'd you begin? Where'd you start? I, went, I went to college, and then I got a, a, a Juris Doctor degree and a Master in Laws degree, and I, went to, I got recruited out of NYU Graduate School of Business where I was pursuing an MBA degree, so with all those degrees and the bar exams. I went to work for Columbia Pictures uh, in, the seven, in the 68, and uh, started in the creative area and worked there for a couple of years, became the president of the company, or that, at that title was called head of the studio uh, in California. And I was there for about five years, left and made a deal with them to do my own pictures with them. While I was there at the company the last couple of years as president, two or three years I was president or head of the studio, we did some great films, Close Encounters, Taxi Driver, Shampoo, a whole bunch of them, Tommy. Uh, really a, a, a sea change from before when you know, it was Paint Your Wagon with Clint Eastwood singing. Suddenly it was 15-year-old kids playing 15-year-old kids. And then I went and formed with a partner, a Casablanca Record and Films, in a music business in the 70s was about as exciting as it could possibly be. You know, Donna Summer, George Clinton, Giorgio Moroda, Kiss, just huge groups and wonderful time making movies, producing the movies myself. And I sold that company and started a little company with the Germans and Dutch called Polygram. And I was the founder and CEO and worked there for a bunch of years. And then sold that company, had a smaller company and made a lot of films. Uh, a whole bunch of films, uh, all the way up, uh, taken into a smaller public company where I bought Barris, which was a uh, game show company, Hollywood Squares, dating game, newlywed game, gong show. Put that all together, kept making my movies and my music. And um, at that point, I had made a whole host of movies. I really produced, executive produced, wonderful movies that I loved. I had some flops too, but um, some really one wonderful ones like Missing, uh, which won the Grand Prize in Cannes, or Gorillas in the Mist, had a bunch of Academy Award nominations and win it, wins, and Rain Man, which won the Best Picture, and Batman, and Witches of Eastwick, and Flashdance, and Color Purple, and plenty of, plenty of films. And, um, and, and I had some flops, too. I had, I had films that when they were shown on the plane, people tried to walk out, like Bonfires of the Vanities. <laughs> so I've had, I've had flops and hits and flops and hits in every area of my, of my life, and they're very close together. That's really the truth. You know, hits and flops in the movie business are very close together, and I learned it was in life, too, in other businesses. And then I, that public company, we, we had a really wonderful period, and the public company got the notice of Sony, and they decided that I would be good as a chairman CEO. I sold my public company with all the accoutrements to uh, uh, Sony and became, from 89 through 95, the chairman CEO of their entertainment uh, vehicle. And that was Lowe's Theaters, International, all over the world, huge company. I left that in, in, and, uh, after 95 and formed a company with Sony called Mandalay Entertainment. And Mandalay Entertainment was a multimedia company. I decided I would go small ball. And I decided that my view of my life was I was a connector. I would connect artists and audience. Wherever the audience was, wherever the artist was, I wanted to be able to go. So in my experiences, I started to move into not just music and films, but very heavily, I went to television, lots of television series, like huge numbers of television, cable movies, documentaries, eight hour, 12 hour, 16 hour, kind of reality based programming. And then I went into sports and built uh, currently uh, what I arguably would be the largest collection of professional baseball teams in the United States, uh, affiliated teams with major leagues with the Yankees and I had them with the Dodgers, I had them Houston Astros, I had them all over the country, very successful operation. Owned a hockey team for five years, and the audience couldn't give a puck. We didn't, we didn't score, we didn't make money, and had a lot of other entrepreneurial activities, and some of those are products are still in my garage. But the idea is I tried a lot of things, and was very heavily invested in technology and new media, because I was always, that was my secret sauce that propelled my career, actually. And um, began doing that, and buying companies, and buying assets, the Tick Clark company I, we bought, which is one of the, I was the largest investor in it. And 
we constantly did things like college sports TV, tried things that crossed multimedia platforms that we felt were impressive in their reach or touch or opportunistic. And we did that. And um, currently, Mandalay uh, and myself, we've uh, had some other activities. I've been teaching for 39 years at UCLA. I'm a full professor there. And I do that every, virtually every semester. Courses from merge of the poet and the engineer to navigating a narrative world to the business school. And I love it. It's great. It's wonderful. I learn more than I teach, by far. And I've been doing that and speaking a lot. And recently, I bought the um, a big NBA franchise in the Bay Area in San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose, the Golden State Warriors, which is a very big undertaking, needless to say. And I'm very excited about it. It's a lot of work. It's a real challenge to be the steward of such a, with my partner, Joe Lacob, Joe and I were the, were the uh, institutional buyers uh, of, of the, of the uh, franchise. So I do a lot of things. Um, Geek Chic Daily, founder and one of the founders and founding investors of that and that side. Uh, I'm on the board of Demand Media, which just went public about 10 seconds ago at a gigantic level, which is a fantastic company and really gives a great opportunity to me. I've been an investor, I'm on the board. And so I do a lot of activities that really have given me a more broader view of the world, and I love it. Why do you think you've achieved so little in your life? I think I've achieved so little because I got scared that, you know, I'm in the third act of my life, and I got to go faster, clearer. Uh, I have to use the economic resources I got. I, all my life in the first two acts, I used my time to make the economic resources. Now I'm using the economic resources to make more time. And that change is uh, crucial because you know, in the third act of your life, in a, in a movie or a film, you want the third act to be the very best, to be, you know, the, the, if you will, the epiphany and the, and, and the moment where it all fits together. And I hope that'll be that way. But I look down the road and I say, okay, the only word I can think about is now.